to do a video on the subject of coronary artery spasm. Okay, um, uh, a lot of people have written to me and said, can you explain coronary artery spasm to us? In particular, Dawn, uh, who follows me on Facebook, uh, has been asking for this for a year or so, and I've said to her, I will do it. So Dawn, this is for you. Okay, so let's just talk about coronary artery spasm. I guess we should start from the very beginning. Okay, what are the coronary arteries? The coronary arteries are arteries which take blood and supply the heart muscle with blood. If the coronary arteries in, are in some way affected, the blood is not going to get to the heart muscle and the heart muscle is going to cry out for blood because it will suffocate without blood and that crying out is usually manifested as a discomfort usually a discomfort rather than a pain okay heaviness constriction tightness like someone sitting on your chest like an elephant sitting on your chest uh, that sensation we describe as angina, this discomfort in the chest which feels tight um, and uh, very, very uncomfortable, but often not a pain. Uh, so this is the classic description of angina, discomfort in the chest. Um, now, the, the, the description of angina was first uh, uh, written by uh, Dr. William uh, Heberden, and that was in 1772. Okay, and what he said was that patients complain of this, particularly when the heart has to work harder. So the heart is, for example, when you're walking, exercising, the heart rate goes up to get blood around the body. The heart is ask is working harder, and because it's working harder, it needs more blood to keep it going. And at that time, when the blood cannot get to the heart, the heart starts aching. So that was described as Hebiden's angina. This isn't the normal kind of angina that everyone talks about. When someone comes to me and says, look, I've, I'm getting chest discomfort, the first question I would always ask them is, does it come on on exercise? And if it comes on on exercise, then that automatically makes me think that this person is describing Hebiden's angina, the angina described by Dr. William Hebiden. Now, as time has progressed, we've realized that majority of times what tends to happen is, that there is disease in the arteries, the, the coronary arteries. So the coronary arteries are in some way narrowed. So when you're sitting there and the heart is not asking for much blood because the heart rate hasn't gone up, then the blood can trickle through and there's no problem. However, when you start working, because there's narrowings in the arteries, the blood cannot get through quick enough. The heart starts complaining by aching, the chest aches, the patient then slows down and the discomfort goes away because as soon as the patient slows down, the heart isn't working that hard and the blood can start trickling through and supplying the heart muscle. So that's normal angina. Then there is this thing called coronary artery spasm or otherwise described as variant angina or Prince metals angina. And this was a description that was produced in, I think, 1959 by Dr. Prince Metal, who basically found that he had a bunch of patients who complained of the same kind of discomfort. But interestingly, that discomfort happened when the heart wasn't working much harder, when the heart was at rest. So these people would get this discomfort very, very similar to the normal angina discomfort, but it was at rest or when the heart person was just doing their day-to-day -day thing and not actually when they were exercising. And when you do, one of the things you have to do when a person has angina is to do an ECG to see if the ECG changes as a mark of less blood getting to the heart. And in both these groups of patients, the patients described by Dr. William Heberton and the patients described by Dr. Prince Metal, both had ECG changes. So we could be confident that this discomfort wasn't coming from somewhere else. It was coming from the heart because there were ECG changes and the nature of the discomfort was very similar. But he couldn't explain why these patients had it at rest or on just day-to-day -day things and not an exercise um, and so what he then did is he did an experiment where he took a bunch of dogs and what he did was he compressed their coronary arteries. So their arteries were normal, but he compressed them. And when he compressed them, he got exactly the same kind of findings that he did with his patients. I, even though the person, the heart wasn't working harder, actually by compressing the artery, you were stopping blood from getting through and therefore the heart was becoming suffocated because it wasn't getting the blood and the ECG changed as well. And then when he let go, the artery opened up 
and um, the blood got there and the ECG changes went away and and the patients, the dog, the you know, the, there was no discomfort. Well, the the the, um, the, the dog wasn't uh, uncomfortable. So this was then described as Prinz metals angina or variant angina, and we now know that actually this is not an uncommon finding, particularly in those people who complain of discomfort, tightness, or heaviness first thing in the morning or when they're. Um, just resting it can come on at rest okay and we don't know exactly the mechanism but what we realize is that some people have arteries which are more prone to developing spasms so the artery itself if you look inside the artery it looks nice and clean there's no narrowings but for some reason and in exposure to some triggers the artery can just tighten up and when it tightens up the heart doesn't get the blood and that's why uh, uh, this happens. It's very interesting because there is a geographical um, variation. So the Japanese in particular, Japanese Taiwanese people, are more prone to coronary artery spasm, far more frequent. It tends to occur in uh, men more than women. It tends to occur between the ages of 40 and 70. It doesn't tend to occur as much after the age of 70. Uh, now, the symptoms, as I say, are mainly discomfort. Now, if the spasm goes on for a very short time, so the artery, for whatever reason, goes into spasm, closes off, and then opens up, the patient may not notice anything. So they may not notice any discomfort at all. However, if it goes on for long enough, then the blood vessel, the, 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 the cells in the heart are not getting the blood. And depending on how long that spasm goes on for, it can be dangerous. It can cause a heart attack. Um, uh, it usually occurs, as I say, um, early hours of the morning, so at rest between midnight and the morning. Uh, some people may actually be woken up with the discomfort. It's very common. Sometimes people will say, when I go out first thing in the morning, that's when I get it. But for the rest of the day, I'm fine. I don't get it. I can do whatever I like uh, for the rest of the day. I'm fine. But the first thing in the morning, that's when I get this discomfort. And that's very you know, telling and makes me think of this kind of condition. Um, you can sometimes get it on exercise as well, and it can also happen in people who do have diseased arteries, and maybe some of them actually have both. They have diseased arteries, um, but they go into spasm as well. Um, but one of the characteristic things, I think, is to make sure that the disease is not so bad that it is actually so tight that it's stopping blood from getting through at rest because if that is the case then it's most likely because of the disease rather than because of the abnormal artery going into spasm. Um, it tends to occur during REM sleep as well you know when we're sort of just about waking up and that's another reason why a lot of people get discomfort first thing in the morning when they come to, into a, to a hospital. In fact that is the commonest time for people to have their heart attacks as well. I think it's relevant for two reasons. One, there are very definite triggers. And two, some of the treatments we use for normal angina don't seem to work and actually can make a coronary artery spasm worse. So let me just talk you through the triggers that can do it. Smoking is a definite trigger. So smoking um, causes inflammation that can cause spasm. Um, people who have low-grade inflammation and high CRP levels, so people who have chronic disease, and they're more likely to have it. Um, mental stress can definitely do it. Physical stress can also do it. Magnesium deficiency has been implicated in this. So the people who are magnesium deficient are more likely to get it. Alcohol consumption can do it. Um, cocaine can definitely do it. Uh, hyperventilation can do it. And it's, it's not uncommon when people sort of get developed, you know, start hyperventilating because they're anxious. They may get this horrendous discomfort because they're bringing on coronary artery spasm. Um, also, uh, straining Valsalva maneuvers when you're straining and pushing, like if you're on the toilet and you're pushing, that can do it. Um, how do you diagnose it? Well, the only way you can actually diagnose it is a you take the history and if the history is very characteristic and the patient's not getting discomfort on exercise but mainly at rest that points you towards that diagnosis but then you have to look at the heart arteries you have to look at the coronary arteries and make sure there is no tight disease there because if it is tight disease then it's simply a mechanical thing it's not this artery going into spasm from time to time so you have to do um, a coronary angiogram and have a look at the heart arteries and that will tell you and then after that um, 
uh, you can give the patient something like acetylcholine or you can make them hyperventilate to see whether the coronary artery is going to spasm. Um, in terms of treatment, it's really, really important to remember that beta blockers, which we normally give for normal angina, can make coronary artery spasm worse. And therefore, beta blockers should not be used in coronary artery spasm. Okay, uh, And therefore, um, it is important to make that diagnosis. And if you have normal heart arteries, but you're still getting this kind of discomfort, it may be worth talking to your doctor about switching you to a calcium antagonist or some nitrates. And a lot of people do reasonably well with things like diltiazem or combination of different calcium antagonists. Of course, I think magnesium is a really good thing to take. And if you're deficient in magnesium, that can make a big difference. And also avoiding the triggers. So I hope uh, this was useful to you. I'm going to try and put more videos out soon. Uh, but please, um, uh, you know, if you suffer from coronary spasm or if you know anyone who suffers from coronary spasm, consider sending them this video or sharing it with them just because it might help them. Um, I'm always so very grateful uh, to you for everything uh, you do and say and, and I'm desperate to try and increase the kind of traction on my uh, videos. So if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the service, I would be so incredibly grateful if you'd consider sharing the video, liking, commenting, um, telling other people about it. Thank you so much. Uh, please note uh, two things. We have a seminar coming up in York, um, United Kingdom on the 28th of April. Uh, uh, and the details are on my Facebook page, but if you'd like details of it, you can email Joe Holland, J-O Holland, H-O-L-L-A-N-D, at ymail.com. And then we have another seminar for people in America and across the Atlantic in New York, and that's on the 4th and 5th of August. Um, and if uh, you'd be interested, please email me um, uh, through my website, which is www.yorkcardiology.co.uk or my Facebook page, which is Your Cardiology One. Thank you so much. All the best.